Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Today we're going to paint something fashionable. Now I am the last one to follow fashion, I don't like trends. I'm always the last person to be wearing the latest thing and uh, usually I don't even catch up the second time around or the third time around. Um, but I've noticed that lots of people are painting, oops, sorry about my coffee cup. Oh, my coffee cup, see, this is, this is one of my paintings on one of our cups, one of our mugs. You can order these from, um, uh, from our website, actually, if you're interested. We've got a few designs and they're, they're quite nice. It's nice and big, so you can have not only a huge cup of coffee, but you can keep your hands warm at the same time. And there's something I complain about quite a lot, actually, isn't it? About hands getting cold. So in my pocket somewhere here, I think I've left it in my coat pocket, so I'll go and get that in a minute. I've got one of those heating packs that um, warms up. And uh, but, but the best thing of all is, uh, if not a hot water bottle, then a cup of coffee. Anyway, to get back to the matter in hand, um, baubles, Christmas tree baubles, great fun, aren't they? And this is one of the easiest things that you can possibly paint and you could make quite an original Christmas card design of your own from doing something like this. And there's a trick, there's a way of doing the circles which is really fun. And um, so what you need is some small cups or containers. This is, this is my version. Anyway, there are other people who use toilet rolls, but I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it this way with these things. I've got lots of little... Um, espresso glasses but any kind of round thing will do uh, they're all different these are all different sizes you see and um, so what you do is you get yourself a collection of those together and then we're going to create something that looks a bit like this so I'll put that aside for the minute because you've seen it now um, what I did was I did a, a quick sketch this is my rough sketch of what I want to do which is baubles and some branches from the Christmas tree because obviously in my world anyway baubles have to hang from something so that's the way I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to use a piece of 10 by 7 Meaden watercolour paper hot press and we're going to do it portrait uh, orientation so the balls will be organised like that. I'm going to use uh, two of my own brushes from Craftamo which people have started to receive now who have ordered them. I'm going to use the mop brush, this one, which is one of the big ones, just to demonstrate to you that a big brush can often be much better than a small one. And then for more of the details, we're going to use this round, which is a medium sized one and number nine, with my signature long haired um, head to the brush. This bit here is a little bit, tiny bit longer than the typical brush of that size. Um, that's a number seven, so that's not a good comparison. Um, but if you had, this is a number 10, so it is a good comparison. You see, it's just a, a, a tad, a, schmid, a smidgen, as we say in England, just a smidge longer than this one. This is a draw well brush, which I also love and get from Japan. I'm going to use the Kuretake Art Nouveau set for this, which I have arranged in a new box. This is um, an old palette that I wasn't using. It's a Stay Wet palette um, from Masterson's. It's the bottom part of that palette. And I think I could probably, someone suggested, why not put the, um, you know, other set in there from Kuretake. The, I have, and I'm just going to try that because I think that's a brilliant idea. So these are the graphite colours, which are now going to live here too. So I can't remember who it was that suggested that, but thank you very much for that excellent suggestion. And you could also put some of the, if you have them, the golds and silvers and things could go in there. Any other Kuretake colour could go in there. So those are the graphites. These are the metallics, and then these are the Art Nouveaus. Um, and a couple of these are from the ordinary um, Kuretake set, but they didn't fit into my other arrangements. So anyway, I've got lots to choose from, and I'm not sure what color range I'm going to use. In this one, which I just did this morning as a tryout, I just used the mauves here. 
and then the green over here. Um, but there's so many choices, you could do any colours you like. So I'll pop that back over there for, the sec, for a sec. I'm also going to use a Winsor & Newton sepia fine liner. This one's a size 0.5 millimetre, presumably. Uh, I talked about the brushes. I might, I could, I might not, probably not because this is a quick one. Uh, you could sprinkle salt on your painting to give more texture if you wanted to. Fine salt, coarse salt, got both of those there. Um, if you wanted to embellish it afterwards, a good way of doing embellishments or to draw um, flowers or whatever you want to do on it is to use a gold pen. This is a Uni Ball Signo gold pen, which is quite good. Better than their white ones, actually. Um, but their white ones are okay. All of these things will be in the description below the video for you to check out if you want. They're all on Amazon. So let's get started. Let's put that over there and let's put that there. Um, try and put it straight, vaguely straight. Now, what I do is have a quick slurp. Um, is make some space for the paints. Put them there. I could do them in, in the um, graphite, couldn't I? I wonder what that would look like. That might be interesting. Okay, so I have my drawing here, which I'm just going to use as a guide. And obviously I've got the biggest one here and then uh, the smallest one there and the one in the middle is there. So size wise, I think this is the biggest one I have. Yeah, so that can go there. Uh, then the next one down is probably that one. I think that's smaller. Yes, it's a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be massively smaller. Uh, and then how about that one? It's a little bit smaller. So that one could go there. Just to give a little bit of size variation. So we could do something like that. So take the biggest one first, take my mop brush. Shall I do it in the graphite colors or is that gonna be dull? Oh, I don't know. Um, let's try it. This is, I think, the blue graphite. So I'm just going to mix up some of that. Then I'm gonna paint it on the rim of this um, cup and then down. Lift up and we have a lovely circle. What we do next is we just rinse off our brush so it's clean, and then we just wet the inside and let the whole thing run. Don't play with it too much, just leave it. Okay, then wash your brush and go for your next cup. So that's a nice gray one. What color should we have now? A, a brighter blue, how about a brighter blue? This is turquoise blue, and this is actually from the main Kuretake set. And we'll do that one here. And don't worry about any splashes that come splish splosh. This is great to do with kids. Just clean your brush and wet the inside of the circle. Just stay inside the circle and let it all move around willy-nilly as it as it will and then we need one more what do you think pink is that gonna work mauve i don't know i don't like that per turquoise there we go and just wet the inside and let the paint run Then you've got options, you see. Um, option number one is that if you don't like one of the colors that you've chosen, you can paint over the top of it. So I'm just gonna pick up anything from my set and just go in there and change the color. Then 
I'm going to take this, uh, oh wait a minute, no not yet, then I'm, I'm making this up as I go along. I'm going to take a tissue and I'm going to lift out highlights. Okay, and that will still continue to, to bleed in. And if you've got too much paint in some areas, just lift it out. Okay, so I'm gonna just leave that because that'll be fine. Then I'm going to just get a piece of paper towel and wipe round and inside my cup. And this is that one, wasn't it? And then we're going to make it and color it again. What did I do with my brush? Okay. Um, with gold. So I have somewhere here some gold. Let's see that here. This is Kiritaki gold. So we'll smush that up and then paint that on there quite generously. It doesn't matter if it runs and then stamp on top. So now we have gold and we can pick up a little bit more water and then wet that and let that run. This is just good, clean fun. I'm as happy as a pig in muck. And I, I know all about pigs in muck because I've just been over to feed our neighbour's pig. I had a word with him yesterday and I asked him if it was okay if I fed his pig and he said, yes, until I eat him, you're welcome. So I'm feeding him because I don't want him to suffer. Uh, so another one has gold on it. And... This one is next. There we go. And we'll just pick up some water. Let that bleed in a bit. And this one too. Plenty of gold. Let that do its thing. Okie dokie. And you can, like I said, you could sprinkle a bit of salt into the damp paint you want. I didn't do this on the trial ones, but uh, that will give us lots of interesting texture if we let that dry. And while it's drying, we can get on with the other part, which is the um, Christmas tree leaves. Okay, and we can just soften those edges there a bit if we want to some of the excess surplus paint. And we just let that dry. Okay, so now we want to paint some um, leaves. So turn my paints around. This colour, forest green, I think this one is, is quite good. And move that out of the way. I don't have enough space. So we just put in a thin branch and then just using the tip, the very tip, you hold it more or less vertical, which helps to give you freedom. And because we've got these nice long hairs on the tip, on the brush, um, you're going to get more movement, which is always a good thing. And then we're going to put another one over here. And we'll do the same thing again. This is fun. And if your hand is not steady, it doesn't matter a jot. So we just put in one layer, first of all, this will dry a little bit lighter uh, than it is at the moment. And then we'll come in with some more green and make it a little bit darker once it's begun to dry a little bit. And then we want another one down here.
and maybe another one here. This won't necessarily have anything attached to it. And we can, to uh, brighten the whole thing up a bit, we can put in some red berries. Uh, just at random. I don't think I want to particularly be botanically correct. Just put them where you, you feel maybe they are needed. And uh, having done that, then you think, oh, probably need a bit more in the way of greenery. And this is how you, this is how, well, I don't know if it's how you, but it's certainly how I grow a painting is by doing something and then thinking, yeah, now I've done that, I need to do this, you know? Don't be stuck on a particular uh, design. It's the last thing you want to do. You want to just let it grow like the pig. Oops, now I really have literally rinsed my brush in my coffee cup. I have literally done that. Okay, I won't be drinking that. Now I'm going to paint in the attachment at the top, the little cap thing that holds the string, just using gold. And there are, there are literally, I don't know how many millions of different ideas that you can explore from here that you could do. Um, one idea is to use this pen and to do some lovely uh, scritchy scratchy, I like doing this, scritchy scratchy, um, you can keep the pen working. I might have to dry everything and come back in a second because I think I will kill that pen. So I'm just going to put the hair dryer on. So now this next stage is I'm, I've dried it and I've rubbed off all the salt and that's left me with this wonderful texture, as you can see here. Um, it's really quite exciting what's happened here. And now with the fine liner, the green uh, sepia color, I'm going to basically enhance the shape by going round the outside edge in a kind of um, loose way. So not really, not trying too hard to keep to the lines and allowing things to just, because you've got your basic circle so now you can just let your hand do what it wants to do. And that just gives it a little bit more interest. And I don't know what your uh, Christmas baubles tops are like, but this is a bit like what I've got. Um, good enough, good enough. And we go around this one on the outside as well. There's about a million things, like I said, that you could do here. But this is what you could call a semi-abstract rendition of Christmas balls. It's not realistic, really. It's just interesting to do and fun. So that's what we're doing, having fun. And uh, put some more lines in there. And you've got your connecting string going down here. Connecting. I always use bent um, paper clips to hold my balls on the tree. So we've done that. You can, if you want, come in with gold and you can do some enhancements. You could put dots and circles and anything you like. You could put to give them more of an effect of being um, so, uh, um, spherical. You could put lines and things. You could put lines going this way. You might not want to spoil your beautiful texture but you can if you want, obviously. Not spoil it, I mean, but you can embellish. If you want, you could put flowers on, you could do anything. I'm just putting a few gold dots. You could put white. Um, and then 
uh, now I'm just going to finish <clears throat> off the, the tree leaves and get some more dark green, quite thick, if I mix that up quite uh, with quite uh, a small amount of water. And then we can go over the top of what we did before with this darker color and that gives you more contrast. Uh, contrast is key. Light and dark in your painting will make it more lively. If that's what you want. More substance. If you were doing this smaller, you might want to use one of the smaller brushes. And I'm going to finish off this painting by doing some spatter on it because spatter is fun. I think I might try to avoid putting my brush in my coffee cup again. I'll do another one down here. Okay, okay, and then let's pick up, I think, maybe some white, perhaps. So this is some um, PH Martin um, bleed proof white, and I'm just going to make a fairly loose mix of that and then just tap it on as snow, like this. Plenty of snow. And I think we're very nearly done. Lots of snow, nice lot of snow, because it's fun to do. And when it's dry, it will look quite good. And if you wanted to, you can put more um, gold in the background and so on. You can add more snow to the branches if you want to. You can make them a little bit more snowy just by going over the top here, if you like. Don't have to do that. You can add yet more snowflakes. But I think really that's probably good enough. And when we have constructed that into our thumbnail, you will see something like this appearing on your screen. So there we are, that's how we do it. And <laughs> don't forget to go to the um, website where you'll find sketches of all the paintings that we've done that you can download for free or you can leave us a tip if you want. Um, the, all the things that we've used in this video are listed in the description below the video on here on YouTube. And um, yeah, this would make a good Christmas card. You could do it in any size and you could cut it out and stick it onto a card and it would be quite dramatically impressive. I'm going to put this in a frame and I'll put it on my um, Facebook page for you to see what it looks like when it's framed because you'll be surprised actually how fun these are, these little paintings, when they've been put into a frame, which gives them a sort of sense of, you know, gravitas, as you might say. So I'm gonna let you go now. I will drink my coffee, which is happily mixed with gold paint, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>